unexpectedly discharged from the hospital. I returned home to find my husband lounging arrogantly. Next to him was a woman with a triumphant expression. A woman who can't even bear children is useless. Let's get divorced. Really, you've wasted my time, so you should go. Pay me $50,000 in compensation. I long been fed up with my husband, but I never thought he would be this slow. However, the thought of being able to leave such a husband for $50,000 seemed almost like a wish granted. Well, not that there's any reason for me to pay him compensation. Fine by me. Here are the divorce papers. I won't pay any compensation, but I agree to the divorce. I'm utterly sick of coming home to a man like him. I declared turning my back on my husband, who was signing the divorce papers with a smile, and the woman who was cheering him on. I started packing my things. I suppose they both feel on top of the world right now, but they will surely come to regret this soon enough. My name is Mary. I have always been an energetic person. At my company, I was always active, contributing ideas, participating in projects, and studying. I wasn't just focused on my work. I wanted a fulfilling personal life as well. I attended mixers arranged by friends and went to marriage parties, making efforts towards marriage. As a result, I met a man named Richard. I fell for that personality of yours. Richard often said, he seemed to truly love me and often took me out on dates. After a year of dating, we decided to get married. His parents lived in Texas, so when we went there to meet them for marriage greetings, they welcomed me with cheerful smiles. Richard's mother couldn't move around well freely, so considering she didn't want to travel far from Texas, I suggested to Richard that we hold our ceremony there. Huh, go out of our way for my mom? I don't think that's necessary. It's her fault that she can't move around freely. We don't need to compromise because of that, Richard bluntly remarked. His words upset me. I believed it was natural to show consideration for someone with issues like hers, yet Richard showed no consideration. However, not wanting to argue before our important wedding, I refrained from going against him. Well, my parents have never been to Texas, and I'd love to take wedding photos with the beautiful nature in the background, I reasoned. Upon hearing these reasons, Richard agreed, and we decided to hold the wedding in Texas. His parents realized that it was because of me, not Richard, that the wedding was held in Texas. They thanked me instead of Richard. Richard's mother, holding my hand, thanked me. If it were just Richard, he probably wouldn't have thought of having the ceremony in Texas. Thank you for considering me, Mary, she said. She also complimented how beautiful I looked in my wedding dress. Richard's father, standing next to his wife, also expressed his gratitude. If the wedding had been in Seattle, I was planning to just see the photos, but since it was here, I really wanted to attend. Thank you so much, Mary, he said. Well, it seemed Richard never really understood why his parents were thanking me. At that time, I didn't fully grasp why Richard showed no consideration or empathy towards his parents, but I would come to understand this as we began our married life. You know that type of person who just looks good on the outside. They act like nice people at work or with friends, but once at home, they become lazy, careless, or arrogant. Richard was exactly that type. Right after we got married, the previously kind Richard stopped helping at home, leaving all the household duties to others. Hey, I'll be coming home late for a while. Could you please make dinner? I asked him one day. Richard frowned and reluctantly replied, Huh, why do I have to make dinner if you're working late? That means you're doing overtime, right? That just proves you're incompetent. Don't make me clean up your mess. While I was taken aback by his words, he continued, Knowing you, you probably think you're capable of meddling in other people's tasks. Causing trouble, right? Giving your nature, I guess being nosy, is just a part of your daily routine. In reality, I am in a position to delegate tasks to others. But it seemed Richard didn't understand that at all. I remember talking about my job to his parents when we visited them in Texas. Apparently, Richard didn't remember any of it. His parents, living far away, occasionally called to check on me and remembered what I had told them about my job. I couldn't understand why Richard, living with me, showed no understanding of my work. However, Richard, convinced he was right, said, if your work is making you come home late, 
then prepare dinner before you leave or leave money for me to order takeout. As it was almost time for me to leave for work, I didn't want to get into more trouble, so I left $20 on the table and departed. I thought I heard him say, that's not enough, from behind, but $20 should be more than enough for one person's takeout. What was he planning to order anyway? I had already realized that Richard pretended to be nice outside but acted as if he was the boss of the house. He never intended to understand my job, presuming from the start that women are useless at work, and you, unable to do household chores, are even more incompetent, he'd say. An incapable employee who can't even serve tea properly, you must be poorly paid, he'd add, in his mind, seeing himself as the superior one in this house, while labeling me as the incapable Mary. He had an immature mindset, but I had no intention of entertaining his immature behavior. Even when he said, a useless woman like you just troubles the company. Why don't you quit and take care of the house? I would respond, can you sake your nonsense for when you're drunk? If you don't intend to understand my work, just keep quiet and quickly left for the office. However, I didn't plan to continue this life for long. Having gathered various pieces of evidence, I was ready to make my move. When an incident occurred, I collapsed. Working hard and being busy in my personal life recently, I got sick and had to be hospitalized. There seemed to be a problem with my appendix requiring surgery and a long hospital stay. Lying on the hospital bed, I sighed and turned on my laptop. When I was admitted to the hospital, my company had contacted Richard, but he never visited me nor did he send a single concerned message. When I played a video on my computer, it showed our living room where Richard and a woman were cozily sitting on the sofa, watching a romantic movie like a couple. They were sitting very close to each other. This video was of our current living room. It seems Richard had noticed the surveillance camera installed in our home. I had originally installed the camera because I wanted a dog, despite us not having kids after being married for a while. However, the camera was soon used for a different purpose. The purpose of the surveillance was to monitor Richard. While I was busy with work, he was bringing another woman into our home. This woman, seemingly declaring war against me, or rather Richard's wife, deliberately left traces of her presence. She left her cosmetics on the sink and left her long hair in the bathtub drain. At first, I thought maybe she was unaware of Richard's marital status, but considering the deliberately placed cosmetics in my discarded toothbrush, it was clear she saw me as a threat. Given the obvious signs of cohabitation in our house, I doubt she mistook Richard for a bachelor. During my hospitalization, I received no calls or texts from Richard. It seems he was busy playing house with his mistress at home. However, I didn't confront him directly over the phone. I was steadily gathering evidence to bring Richard down. The timing of my hospitalization was good, as I was transitioning my work responsibilities to others and planning a long leave from work. From the hospital bed, I efficiently proceeded with my plans. First, I received the results of an investigation I had requested from a private detective revealing the identity of Richard's mistress. Her name is Mina, a beautiful woman who seems to be a model. She apparently has other boyfriends besides Richard, though he seems oblivious to this fact. Next, I contacted both my in-laws and my own parents. After the divorce revelation, I'm sure Richard will soon realize his predicament. I decided to lay the groundwork so that he couldn't rely on anyone else. My in-laws, already fond of me, were saddened to learn of their son's betrayal and declared they would disown Richard. My parents readily agreed to store some of my belongings for a while, and just as I had sorted everything out, it was time for me to be discharged. Before leaving the hospital, I sent Richard a message. I'm being discharged tomorrow. It was read but remained unanswered. He must have been too busy with Mina to bother replying. At this point, his attitude no longer surprised me. Rather, I sighed at the realization of how poor my judgment had been in choosing a man like Richard. After divorcing Richard, even if I resumed looking for a partner, I doubted my own judgment. Despite these thoughts, I headed home to settle things with him. When I got home and said, I'm back, Richard didn't come out of the living room. I thought he might not have noticed my return, 
but as I entered the living room, there he was, lounging on the sofa with Mina looking triumphant by his side. It seemed they were eagerly waiting for my return. As soon as I walked in and saw them, Richard, with a smug look, said, A woman who can't even bear children should just get divorced. Actually, you wasted my time, so you should pay me $50,000 in compensation. I have long been fed up with Richard, but never imagined he would be this low. However, the thought of being able to leave such a husband for $50,000 seemed like a blessing, not that I had any reason to pay him compensation. And to think he brought up the reason for divorce as inability to bear children, how foolish can he be? It's truly saddening to realize how bad my judgment of men has been. Fine by me. Here are the divorce papers. Regaining my composure, I spoke. I won't pay compensation, but I agree to the divorce. I'm utterly sick of coming home to a man like him. Richard, signing the divorce papers with a smile, and Mina, excitedly cheering him on, didn't face me as I began packing my belongings. When I finished packing, Richard and Mina came to me with completed divorce papers. Richard, looking self-satisfied, said, Now I'm rid of a useless woman like you, and this beautiful Mina, once we're married, we'll surely have kids right away. Mina responded with a giddy, Oh my Richard, you're so bold. It was a conversation I could only think of as, get a room. I ignored them, quickly received the divorce papers, and let in the movers I had called in advance, promptly moving out my belongings. At this point, Richard seemed puzzled. Wait, why are movers here already when we just talked about divorce? Mina's excitement about finally being alone and hugging Richard made him quickly forget his doubts. Thus, I quickly moved out, but I wasn't going to just leave Richard and Mina for them to get away with this. A month after my divorce from Richard, I started receiving incessant calls from him early in the morning. Actually, I had already bought a new phone, transferring all contacts except Richard's to it, leaving the old phone at home while I went to work. When I returned home, there were over 100 missed calls. I stopped counting after 100. I thought, if he's trying this hard to contact me, why not try another way? But when he called again, I finally answered. On the other end, Richard sounded almost tearful. Hey, what's this all about? I knew he had many questions, but I wasn't sure what he wanted to know most. So I asked, what do you mean? He replied, you're demanding compensation for me. I got a certified mail. Aren't you supposed to be the one paying me? I was dumbfounded. He had blatantly cheated during our marriage, so I thought he'd understand the concept of paying compensation for his infidelity. Apparently, he didn't grasp even that basic idea. You have to say sorry and pay compensation for cheating, I explained, but he retorted, but it's your fault, isn't it? You couldn't have children. I sighed deeply. I'm not infertile. Remember when we went to the hospital together? It turned out you were the reason we couldn't have kids. Did you think fertility was only a woman's issue? And you just ignored the doctor's explanation. It seems you didn't even understand why I took you to the gynecologist for tests. So it's my fault? But that's strange. Mina says she's pregnant. I shrugged my shoulders. According to the detective's investigation, Mina is cheating on you with other men. The father of her child is probably someone else. Besides, I can't imagine she'd marry you. Ha! Huh? Well, you don't have money. Richard seemed confused by my words. What are you talking about? Now that the useless you are gone, my life will be even more prosperous. I've been living well so far, so now it will be even better. You seem to have forgotten, but I was a manager at my company. I led major projects and I'm about to become the president of a newly established company. My salary is much higher than yours, and I was the one paying for our takeouts because you always made a fuss. The luxurious life you've been living was thanks to me. I've taken on various challenges and advanced in my career, so now my annual income is $800,000. Unaware of all this, Richard had asked me for a divorce. His salary has been the same since we got married a mere $2,000. Considering Mina was involved with several other men, I couldn't see why she would choose to marry Richard. Richard, unaware of the reality, pleaded, 
This, this can't be, Mary. It's not too late. Let's get back together. But I just snorted and said, who would want to live with someone as incompetent as you? I have no intention of supporting someone who can't do housework or hold a job. Afterward, he apparently stormed into the company where I used to work, not realizing I was already the CEO of another company. When he demanded, bring out Mary, at my old company, it told him I wasn't there anymore. Refusing to believe them, he caused a scene and even broke a window. Eventually, the police were called, and he was taken away. Now he owes not only compensation, but also damages for breaking the company's window. How pathetic. This incident became the talk of his workplace, and he's been talked about behind his back by his colleagues. Despite the negative attention, he continues to work there because of his financial obligations. He had to move out of the house we shared and now lives in company housing. When I demanded compensation from Mina as well, I informed her parents and her numerous boyfriends about her actions. She ended up getting sued for marriage fraud and was severely scolded by her family. Now that her family is monitoring her every move, she's focusing on her job. As for me, I check the compensation payments every month and have decided to take a break from relationships, focusing even more on my work than before.